All right, hello everyone. I want to take a few minutes to go through the entire series and talk about what each part will contain so that people can figure out what parts will be most useful for them. Um, that being said, I do think the series watching it in chronological order will help, um, especially if you're new to this material. Um, so that being said, also feel free to put me on times two speed. I can sometimes speak sort of slowly. That's just my style. Um, and I definitely won't, won't be offended. Uh, so let's get into it here. All right. So I am here at the uh, GitHub page for this PyTorch tutorials project. And we are gonna look through the readme this is kind of the home base for the project. Uh, so if you ever are looking for links or anything, this is where to go. And the link to this GitHub readme should be at the bottom of this YouTube video. Okay, so here we've got some hyperlinks to the Python docs, PyTorch docs, PyTorch lightning docs. Those are the three you know, main set of docs that you're going to need to look at, maybe NumPy if you're new to that as well. This is the link to the YouTube channel for the project and then the uh, PyPI project. So as we go and as we go through the series, we're going to build um, these methods and these classes. And I've just put them all in this, this pip installable project as that'll be illustrated as we go, um, just so that people can easily use any of these methods um, and classes as they want to try to build their own sort of like sandboxes and get intuition for how this stuff works because I do think that getting into it working with examples with your hands that's how you're going to learn this stuff not by reading textbooks at least that's my take and that's what I've found so let's uh, let's look. So right now there's only an intro to computer vision uh, series. That's what we're looking at. Uh, that's what you're looking at. So in the future, I thought it would be maybe cool to build out like a series for Torch text and Torch audio as well. But for now it's focused on, on Torch vision. So let's look at this. So I'm not going to read all this, but feel free to, um, I'll, I'll read this <laughs> summary, right? So by the end of the series, a PyTorch uh, computer vision novice should have the tools to train any of the models we co cover on a custom data set. That's gonna be covered in part one to four. And then also quickly apply a trained mask RCNN model to their own, own images and videos. And when that's what we'll review in part five. Okay, so this is where you are right now. Um, I want to flag the documentation. So if you open this, uh, this is the readme for the um, intro to CV uh, package. So um, this is kind of just like a sample of some of the images that we're going to be able to create with this package very easily uh, in a very, you know, simple, I'm hoping, uh, to use format. So, uh, and then this is just some images coming from the sort of more basic, like uh, building blocks that we're gonna use in um, series or part one through four. But I just wanted to show you this. This is where you can look at any of the documentation for the methods that we build and the classes that we build in this series. And then if you were just to click on one of these, you could follow the link to the, uh, you know, dot pi file uh, and look at the module itself. Okay, so that is there for your reference. But let's look at the meat and potatoes of this series. So there are five parts um, plus this little intro. And so the first part is object counting with CNNs. We're going to build a model that counts the number of objects in an image. Then we're gonna do image segmentation with UNet. Both of these, we're gonna build the models from scratch. And then in parts three and four, we're gonna go into faster RCNN and mask RCNN. We're gonna use the Torch Vision implementations of those. 
and show you how to train a custom data set from scratch for those models. Um, and we're going to use PyTorch Lightning uh, for all of these because I find that's a really great way to organize PyTorch code. Um, and then we're going to apply mask RCNN in the wild, right, on some real images. Because in these uh, parts of the series, we're just going to use these toy data sets that we're going to build from scratch, um, which is going to be really nice for quickly running these models uh, on these very lightweight uh, image data sets, but that we can still get a full understanding of how the model is working. So all I did was open up these links over here and I just want to show you a little sampler of what we're going to do in each one. So let's look at the object counting one first. So this is an example of like what the uh, images that we're going to build look like. And then here we can overlay some targets. Uh, so what we want to build in this problem for this ser for this part of the series is just build a model that can count the number of different objects in the image. Um, so in this image we have two lines and four donuts. We would like to build a model that can do that and we will do that uh, in that part of the series. Okay, let's go on to number two. That's image segmentation with UNet. Um, so here we want to segment the images. So that is giving us a pixel wise classification, right? So the, our targets actually are masks, right? Where each pixel is assigned a class. So we're gonna build a model from scratch um, to accomplish that task. This, you know, UNet has been written a lot about for like cell segmentation images and stuff. Um, and this is really like understanding how UNet works is integral to understanding how mask RCNN works and faster RCNN works. So I think this is a great building block towards those. Uh, and then I'll just flag like, you know, we, we're going to use these widgets so that we can scale uh, any of the parameters um, in the image data set very easily, but keep going in the series to get the details on, on this. For now, I'm just trying to give you an overview. Okay, so then we've got the faster RCNN data set. We're gonna, we have, uh, again, just the same image data set, but now our targets are bounding boxes Right, and so we're going to build. Well, we're not going to build a model from scratch. We're going to use faster RCNN, uh, which obviously I did not build. But there is a Torch Vision implementation of that model in the model zoo, and we're going to use that to train on this custom uh, toy data set. And you should be able to use the exact same code to train on your own uh, custom data set as long as you have, you know, targets like we'll show how you need, right? You're gonna need bounding boxes for your training set. Okay, um, then we're gonna finish up with mask RCNN, which contains everything that faster RCNN contains, but it also contains target masks, right? So it contains both bounding boxes and masks, um, and we're gonna talk through that and look at the paper a little bit um, so yes, this is the final stage and, you know, there are models that are sort of, you know, more state of the art than this. Um, but like UNet, I mean, I'm sorry, like YOLO, uh, but this is pretty great. And this is sort of the, you know, the mask RCN and paper is like towards real time, uh, image segmentation or instance segmentation, I should say. Uh, so this is a great model to understand in our, you know, sort of journey with this uh, computer vision stuff. So um, that is the final part of the series with this toy data set of grayscale uh, images. But then we'll wrap up with um, 
a uh, bunch of utility functions for just taking a real image, so like something that's just on your hard drive, a JPEG, and converting them to uh, torch images, and then segmenting them with a really nice, uh, some like easily, oh, sorry, some easy to reuse functions here. So all of these things, all of these parameters can be adjusted the uh, with a certain config that uh, config file that we're going to build or config dictionary. So this is going to be very reusable uh, and um, hopefully will help people in their own projects. Uh, and then we're going to just wrap up with segmenting um, a video uh, and showing how to segment a video, uh, apply, you know, something that looks like this to a video and then uh, write that to disk. And we're actually going to all do all that in um, Colab and I will share the links to the raw images here uh, and some examples that you can download. Uh, and then put in your own drive. So that is it. I'll just wrap up with showing a quick video of sample of the um, processed video that we're going to build in the last part of the series in part five. So I hope that was a useful summary. Um, and I hope this tutorial series is useful for you. All right. I will see you in part one. Goodbye. <laughs>